Hello, Mount Lebanon scholars and family and friends. It's Pastor Krieger, and I'm back again with our weekly chapel devotion here at Mount Lebanon Lutheran School. I'm so glad to be able to join with you today as we worship God. And later we're going to have a message from Principal Finkbeiner for us from God's Word. Uh, and it's all going to be focusing in on our fruit of the Spirit for this week, which is goodness. Goodness is when Jesus' love compels us to put our care and our love for other people into action. So we carry out our love for them through the things that we do, even through the things that we say. That's going to be the focus of our worship today. Let's begin by calling on God's name and asking him to be with us in our worship. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And friends, God wants us to love him and to serve him as his children. But we haven't always done that. We've been disobedient and sinful. So let's repent of our sins and ask God for his mercy. We ask him to forgive us. Feel free to, to join in and repeat after me. Father in heaven, I am a sinful person. I have disobeyed you in many ways. And I do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, I pray to you. Please wash all of my sins away. And take away my guilt. Amen. Friends, God has washed our sins away. This week we're talking about goodness, and that's how he showed his goodness to us. Jesus came into this world to put his love and his care for you into action. He did that by living a perfect life for you, by going to the cross where he died as the payment for your sins and to wash your sins away. So because of what Jesus has done, I'm able to announce to you today, friends, that your sins are they are all forgiven. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. Let's go ahead and join together now in our opening song. This first song is called Draw Us to Thee. It's a hymn that we sing during this time of the year. Next Thursday, we're going to be celebrating the day that Jesus ascended into heaven after he rose from the dead. And so Jesus is in heaven right now, friends, watching over you taking care of you, using things in your life and using his word to draw us closer to him. And so we celebrate that with this song. Share 
Let's give our attention now, friends, to Principal Finkbeiner. He has a message for us from God's word from the prophet Micah. It's a message that talks about goodness, and it asks the question, what is good? And God gives us his answer. He says, what is good is to, to act justly, to put our care and our love into actions for other people, to love God's mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And so let's give our attention to Principal Finkbeiner. Greetings, Mount Lebanon family. It's Mr. Finkbeiner coming to you today with our chapel message. Before we hop into that message, let's start with prayer. We pray, Lord God, Heavenly Father, come to, uh, with us today uh, as we study your word. Send your Holy Spirit as we meditate on, on what you have to say to us uh, through the Bible and strengthen our faith. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have a question for you. What can you buy for a dollar? Um, one of my favorite things to buy with a dollar is a delicious box of lemon heads. In fact, at certain gas stations, you can get four boxes for one dollar. It's not bad for a dollar. What can you buy for a thousand dollars? Well, I did a little research. For a thousand dollars, you can get a PlayStation 5 bundle that comes with the headphones the extra remote and it also has two games it costs you about a thousand dollars what about for a million dollars well i did a little research and this house you can buy this house for one million dollars it has about seven bedrooms uh, six bathrooms uh, it has a outdoor pool a walk-in closet all of that for a million dollars. What about for a billion dollars? Well, for a billion dollars, you can buy this 509 feet long super yacht. And actually, with a billion dollars, you could buy four of those super yachts, all for a billion dollars. That's impressive. But even if you had more than a billion dollars, there are some things that you and I know money cannot buy. And there's a long list of those things. For example, you know, money can't buy true friendship. Um, if somebody likes you because of your money, you don't have true friendship. Uh, no matter how much money you have, you can't buy more time. God has uh, your birthday and he has your death. And money cannot move those days. Can't give you more time. Money also can't make you healthy. Uh, you can't if you are sick with the flu. You cannot pay for the flu to go away. Money can't pay for sickness to go away. Um, and you know what else is true? We know this as Christians that money cannot buy forgiveness. Forgiveness comes through Jesus. We're reassured of that forgiveness when our Christian friends tell us that we're forgiven, but money cannot buy forgiveness. The reason I ask this question about what money uh, can buy and what, what you can't buy with money is this. We're going to look at a section of the book of Micah. And Micah was a, a prophet to the Israelites who were God's Old Testament people. And he came in a time in Israelite history when things were pretty prosperous. People had a good amount of money um, but that money and, and the wealth that they had accumulated had really corrupted the people they had started to think that their money was what made them who they were and not God and Micah the prophet he comes to those people and tells them to stop he really actually tells them to stop doing three things first he says stop behaving unjustly you see, at this time, the Israelites were bribing leaders of the church. They were bribing leaders of the government to do the things they wanted them to do. And a lot of times those things were illegal and wrong. And like I said, this is not how God wants us to behave. 
He also told them to stop being unmerciful. Even though the Israelites were doing pretty well with their money, they were greedy. And they were taking advantage of the poor. They weren't using the gifts and the talents and the treasures that God had given them to help others. They were using all of that time, treasure, and talents to just serve themselves. And Micah told them, stop being arrogant. He said, your money has made you proud. Um, you think that, that you're better than everybody else because you have more wealth. And basically what Micah said to them is, you Israelites, you need to repent of your sins. You've done wrong, and it's time for you to repent. The Israelites heard this message from Micah. They said, well, my goodness, we're, we're doing these things that are wrong. What does the Lord require? In other words, what do we need to do to be forgiven? And you might be surprised at what the Israelites thought they could do to be forgiven. Look at what it says in Micah chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves, a one year calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? See the Israelites thought that they could buy their forgiveness. In fact, they have a long list. They say, God, if we give you a burnt offering, will we be forgiven? If we take a perfect calf and we sacrifice it, will we be forgiven? What if we sacrificed a thousand rams? Would we be forgiven then? Or what if we brought you rivers of expensive oil? Would we be forgiven then? They even went so far as to say is, what if we sacrificed our own children to you, Lord? Would we then be forgiven? But you know this. We just talked about it. There are some things that money cannot buy. And the prophet Micah had explained that to the people. You see, he had told them just in the chapter before, that from Bethlehem there would come forth one who would be ruler in Israel. Do you know who that ruler was that would be born in Bethlehem? I bet you do. He continues in, in Micah chapter 5 verse 9, he says, Your hand will be lifted up in triumph over your enemies, and your foes will be destroyed. Micah says there's going to be somebody who comes from Bethlehem who's going to raise his arms in triumph, in victory. That's where your forgiveness comes from. And who is that person that was born in Bethlehem whose hands were raised in victory? That's 100% Jesus. Money cannot buy forgiveness. Only Jesus can win forgiveness, total forgiveness through his perfect life. In fact, we can think of it this way. Grace is the key to it all. Grace means God's undeserved love. It's not our good deeds that buy us salvation, but it's God's love and mercy. That's why the poor are as acceptable before God as the rich. It's the generosity of God, the freeness of salvation, that lays the foundation of justice for us all. You see, money can't buy it. Only grace, God's love for you and I, only His mercy, mercy meaning we deserve punishment, but God doesn't give us punishment. Only God's generosity, his willingness to give, only this and the freeness that comes through salvation, these are the things that set you and I free, that forgive us our sins. It's all through Jesus. 
So now what? You have this amazing Savior who loves you so much, has taken away your sins. Now what do you do? Well, Micah actually explains that too. The prophet Micah says in, in verse 8, he says this, He has showed you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And friends, that's what you're called to do. Knowing you are forgiven through Jesus, act justly. Treat others how you would like to be treated. Friends, love mercy. Forgive one another. Don't hold grudges. Repent and be forgiven. And walk humbly with God. Value Jesus. Know he is your loving Savior. Love God, your creator and father and preserver. And do his will. Serve others as you walk humbly with God. These things, justice, mercy, and humility, they also cannot be bought with money. Rather, they are gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you. Those fruits of the Spirit. And as you go, friends, go with the Holy Spirit, living for a God who loves you, who bought forgiveness for you through his Son, Jesus, because we couldn't buy it on our own. May God bless you and keep you, and make his face shine upon you. Thank you so much, Principal Finkbeiner, for that message. Friends, let's join together now in confessing who we are, those three identity questions that, that we announce who we are because of Jesus and because of what he's done for us. So I'll ask the questions and then let's join together in the answers. Who are you? I am a child of God, an heir of eternity, loved and saved through Jesus. What are you called to do? I am called to be a disciple of Jesus with him living in me so that I can live for him. Finally, friends, how can you live for Jesus? With the power and forgiveness of Jesus, I can be a leader by serving God and others. And now let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Friends, our, our third term mission offering is still going. We're gathering money in those baby bottles that you have in your classrooms to help support the New Beginnings Home for Mothers. That's reaching out and providing a safe place to live for mothers and their young babies or mothers who are pregnant. And so you can bring your offerings into your classroom and we're filling up these baby bottles. Take a look. Here's the baby bottle from second grade. Look, it's almost full, which is awesome. Let's keep on bringing those in and see how big of an impact we can make to help those moms and their little babies. And then, friends, I want to invite you to join us this weekend for worship right here at Mount Lebanon. We're here Saturday night, tomorrow night at 530, and then Sunday at 930 in the morning. We'll close with our final song now. It's called Battle Begins. This is a song that we're going to be singing at our 8th graders' graduation at the end of the month. Yeah, it's the month of graduation, and so we'll be joining together with them uh, throughout our chapel services this month and singing this awesome song that teaches us about putting our trust in God. God bless your week, friends.